Hey y'all, you're watching Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird speaking to you live on June 12th. Are you ready to discover a cosmic spectacle? And are you ready to imagine how what we see in our sky translates to three dimensional space? If so, picture this, a dazzling distant star shining brightly right next to a red planet in the night sky. They're not just beautiful, they're fascinating to think about. I've got charts and more to show you coming up. And by the way, if you're watching live and you have questions, be sure to drop them into the comments of whatever platform you're watching on, and I'll try to answer them if I can. Okay, so this round ball here represents our night sky. And notice the two stars on the left. One is a true star, blue-white Regulus, and the other is a planet, red Mars. You can see this star and planet in our sky tonight or in the coming evenings, in fact, for all of June. Look west after the sky grows dark, and the direction west is marked by a W on this chart. And be sure to look along the path that the sun travels during the day. That path is marked on this chart by a green line. Mars and the star Regulus will be noticeable because they now appear so near each other on our sky's dome. So you'll see that Mars is red and Regulus is blue-white. Look for them tonight and then again tomorrow or the next night. And did you catch that? They got closer. And if you're watching this before June 16th, you'll be able to see this star and planet move closer together uh, in our sky as well. Mars and Regulus will be closest on June 16th. They'll look like a double star in the night sky. Some people will report them as UFOs. But you'll know better. The exact time of their conjunction is 4 UTC on June 17th, 2025. So the evening of June 16th is best for us in the Americas. And that's when you can extend your arm and cover Mars and Regulus with just one finger. Uh, and all the evenings around June 16th are good too. Uh, for all of us on Earth, early evening is the time to look as soon as the sky gets good and dark. So one sky, right? This is a whole Earth event. And although Mars and Regulus will look close together in our sky, of course, they're many light years apart. Mars is a rocky planet in our own solar system. It's smaller than Earth, and it orbits one step outward from us. We pass between Mars and the Sun in January. So Earth is traveling ahead of Mars in orbit now. A light beam going between Earth and Mars right now would require about 14 minutes of travel time to go from one planet to the other. And meanwhile, Regulus is a mighty star, vastly bigger than Mars and much, much farther away. The estimated distance to the star Regulus is about 79 light years. And if you and I could travel to Regulus and see this star close up, we'd find not one, but several stars, at last count at least four stars in this multiple star system. And the primary star, which we call Regulus A, is nearly four times the mass of our sun and about four times as wide as the sun, but almost 300 times brighter. Our huge sun is the little yellow ball on the bottom right of this illustration. And notice the flattened shape of the larger ball. That's an artist concept of Regulus. Both the Sun and Regulus are stars, giant balls of gas held together by their own self-gravity. But our Sun spins on its axis uh, in a stately 25 days, so it stays fairly round. And meanwhile, Regulus, the much bigger star, spins around once in just 16 hours. In fact, it spins only 15% below the speed needed to start flying apart. And that's why astronomers think that if we could see it close up, it'd look flattened. 
And like our sun, this beautiful star, Regulus, shines via thermonuclear fusion reactions. It turns hydrogen to helium at its core with a bit of mass left over that converts to energy and flows from the star as starlight. This photo of Regulus is by the late great astronomer, Fred Espinac. And you can see how Fred captured the blue color of Regulus here. That color is a clue to what Regulus is like. It's a very young and massive star, maybe only about a billion years old, in contrast to our sun's four and a half billion years. And both Regulus and our sun are about halfway through their lifespans. So you know that Regulus won't live as long as our sun, and that's because of its greater mass. So stars with a lot of mass burn more brightly and fiercely than our sun. They're like spinthrifts burning through all their huge mass quickly, and so running out of energy sooner. Just a few more things to say about Regulus in the June night sky. It's also called Alpha Leonis. Uh, its constellation is Leo the lion. You're seeing the pattern of the lion traced out here. Regulus is the brightest star in Leo. Its name means little king. And Regulus is sometimes called Cor Leonis, the lion's heart. So if you see Mars and Regulus in a dark enough sky this month, be sure to look for this constellation. Leo has a noticeable pattern or asterism within it in the shape of a backwards question mark. See that on the right in this photo, or not photo, this, uh, this illustration? This pattern is called the sickle. The bright uh, star Regulus marks the bottom of the question mark pattern. But what about the other member of the dynamic star planet duo in the June night sky. What about Mars? Mars is the only planet we can see easily in the evening now. And having Regulus right there next to it makes it even easier for us. So go outside and look west as night falls. Uh, look for two dots in the sky, one blue white and one red. Then use your imagination to picture those dots as our neighbor, Mars, near a much more distant star. And we all know something about Mars. It's the fourth planet from our sun, sometimes called the red planet. It's a desert world with rusty, iron-rich soil and blowing dust. It's about half the size of the Earth. It has huge, dormant or extinct Volcanoes, we've never seen them erupt. Uh, Olympus Mons on Mars is the tallest volcano in the solar system at 13 miles high. It's about twice the height of Mount Everest. Mars also has a vast canyon system called Valles Marineris. It's much, much larger than Earth's Grand Canyon, despite the fact that Mars is a smaller world than Earth. The canyons are hundreds of miles wide in some places. Mars also has polar ice caps made of water and carbon dioxide. And people using small telescopes on Earth can see the ice caps on Mars waxing and waning with the Martian seasons. Mars has four seasons, just like Earth, and it likely had liquid water on its surface in its past. Multiple robotic missions from Earth are exploring Mars now, including rovers that are searching for signs of ancient microbes. So was there ever life on Mars, or will we be the ones to put it there? Just remember that Mars' atmosphere is thin, and unlike, uh, unlike Earth, Mars doesn't have a protective magnetic field. So Mars is subject to a constant bombardment of radiation, both from storms on our sun and from events beyond our solar system, possibly supernova explosions. And this radiation striking Mars is harmful, very harmful to humans. So humans on Mars surface will have to protect themselves from this radiation in some way. Maybe large numbers of humans 
Uh, even a whole city of humans could live on Mars someday, but they'll probably be living underground. And maybe that'll happen. Uh, probably not in my lifetime, but maybe in yours. And you know, in Chinese thought, the West is the direction of dreams and visions. So it's the perfect direction to gaze tonight or in the coming evenings toward this planet that dreamers have always loved. So watch for this incredibly great conjunction, a cosmic rendezvous of the red planet Mars and blue-white star Regulus, closest on June 16th. And remember, around June 16th, Mars and Regulus will look like a double star in our night sky. For today, that's our show. I'm Deborah Bird. And by the way, the June solstice is coming up and we're hosting a solstice party live on June 20th. We want to know what's your personal solstice? What's your special way to celebrate this hallmark of the seasons? You can submit photos to Earth Sky. Um, ECP stands for Earth Sky Community Photos. Uh, so ecp.earthsky.org, submit a photo. We'd love to see your special solstice place. Or you can submit a solstice story at the contact button at earthsky.org. I'll be back here tomorrow speaking with a meteorologist about that big cloud of Saharan dust that's currently coming our way. We hope you'll join us then. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky.